Okay, so there's something that I uh, forgot to mention about the scene that's rather important. Um, it's actually not three dimensions, but four dimensions. This really is a four-dimensional program, but we say 3D because it's easier for us to understand what the application is all about. But the fourth dimension that I'm talking about is the dimension of time. So not only do we have three dimensions of space, but we also have one dimension of time that we can manipulate. And this is how all animation actually occurs. Uh, let me just give you an example. Uh, if we take this cube and I hit the button S, you can see what's happened is that after I hit the S button, the channels become red. And if you look down here at this little uh, sequence of numbers, this is the timeline. You can see that with this cube, there's now a little red line indicating that there is a key set on this. And if you've ever worked with a program that's used uh, keyframes, such as After Effects, um, I can't think of another right now, but any program that has anything to do with motion, you'll be familiar with keyframes. So let me just go ahead and create a small animation, and then I'll try to explain what it is that we've done here. So I'm just going to add some rotation to this cube. We rotate it a few times like this. And now I'm going to hit S again on frame 24. And now I'm going to hit this play button. And you can see that we now have some animation happening here. So it's scrubbing through pretty quickly. Let me just stop this. And I'm going to use the left mouse button and drag this along myself. So you can see what's happening here, uh, hopefully. I set a keyframe at this position. Then I rotated the camera, or sorry, I rotated this cube quite a bit into this position, and I hit a keyframe on this key, and then what Maya does is, is it says, okay, you've set a keyframe on key uh, 24 and key 1, and I'm going to make up the difference in between. So I'm going to go from 1 to 24, and I'm going to go to the uh, rotations that you inputted and fill everything in between. And so that's exactly what's happening. And in a real way, this is how all animation is done in 3D, except it's much, much, much more sophisticated than what I've just done, where you've got uh, characters that are giving performances and uh, emoting and convincing the audience that there's an emotional impact, and, you know, characters walking or things exploding, uh, you know, transformers doing crazy stuff and blowing up and running around and cars driving buildings falling over, <laughs> you know, everything you can think of that you could do in 3D is done in this way where you have uh, keyframes happening. Now the only exception to this is with the motion capture technology. So if you think of a movie like Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit where you have a character like Gollum that's controlled by an actor, that's actually a little bit different. So in that case you have a actor giving a real performance on a motion capture stage and that data that's being picked up from the cameras all around him or her goes directly into the computer and translates into keyframes. So there's still keyframes happening, just not in the same way as, as what we're doing here. Okay, so before we go much further I want to tell you how to save your scene. So let's imagine that I've spent hours and hours working on this and I really think it's a beautiful work of art and I don't want to lose it, I want to save it so I can use it later, I can show my friends, or I can render it, or do something. Uh, what we have to do is we have to go to File, Save Scene, or actually Save Scene As. So what this is going to do is it's going to take a look at everything in your scene, meaning it's going to look at all the cameras, it's going to look at the cubes that I have here, and anything else in my scene, which actually is nothing. I just have the cubes and the cameras. And it's going to write it out to a file. And uh, what's going to happen is when I open this up again, Maya is going to read all that data and it's going to go ahead and create all the cubes and the cameras and so forth and then enter in all the channel information into it so that it ends up exactly the same as I have here. It's also going to save out the animation I put onto this cube. So what I have to do is I have to find a convenient place to save it which in this case is my desktop, and I'll just call this cube test. And uh, now I have two different options. 
I can save it as a Maya binary file or a Maya ASCII file. The only difference here is that an ASCII file is written in plain text and a binary file is encoded uh, into a binary format. So almost always I choose Maya binary and the reason is because it saves faster and it actually saves a smaller file. So why would I ever need to use ASCII files you may ask and the reason is because there may be certain situations where you want to actually edit the Maya file by hand. And uh, I'm going to save it out as an ASCII file just so I can show you what it looks like when I open it up. Okay, so it's closed the dialog box and I now have confirmation that it's saved to the right folder uh, by looking at this down here. It says result c colon users eric desktop cubetest.ma. So now if I open up a browser, I can actually go to this cubetest and find it. And here it is. It's an ASCII file. It's pretty small. Uh, of course, it's not a very big, complicated file. So if we go now and open this with a notepad program, you can actually see all this code here. And if you're at all familiar with JavaScript, like I was mentioning before, you can sort of make sense of this. But um, you can actually read it in a way. Um, all this code is just telling you, or telling Maya, how to go ahead and create this scene. So a binary file is going to be no different from this, except that instead of all this text, you're going to see a bunch of garbled uh, characters, because it's trying to interpret those zeros and ones. But there's a couple of things that we can sort of pick up already. Um, you know, we've got these attributes here, which is referring to uh, CT, that would be translate. So this particular camera, looks like, has this location in world space. It's just kind of interesting to look through and understand this stuff. Um, but we are getting a little distracted. This isn't very important, but I just want to make sure that anybody who's interested has the opportunity to learn exactly what's happening underneath the hood of all this stuff. So that's how we save our work. Um, by default, whenever I'm saving my work, and I'll ask you to do this for the rest of the class, uh, whenever you're working in progress, you should save off your work incrementally. Meaning if my file name is cube, what I like to do is do an underscore, or sometimes I'll use a period, and I'll do version. So I typed in a V for version and 01. That way, if I'm working and I make a change like this, instead of resaving over that file again, I'll save it as 2 version 2. And there's a couple of reasons for doing this. The first one is uh, if something terrible goes wrong in your scene, which is not impossible, it could happen, uh, and something gets corrupted or some other problem arises, we'll not have lost all our work because we're not resaving over the same file over and over again. I can always go back down to this version here, cube version 1, and although it may not be as up-to-date as the last one, as this version is, at least I'll be able to recover something. So this is a mistake that I made when I first started doing computer graphics, is I would just save over the same file because it seemed like the most intuitive and easy thing to do. But I screwed myself over many times by doing that because, uh, actually I just screwed myself over once because I never wanted to repeat it. Um, and so this way you have that insurance, you have that ability to go backwards. The other reason is if something doesn't go wrong but you just make a mistake or perhaps you decide that the way you're going with your work is not how you'd like it to go, you can then go backwards and uh, and start over from a certain point in time. You don't have to start over completely or you don't have to try to get your, your model that you don't like back to a place by hand. You can just go back and do it yourself that way. So I highly recommend you do that. It's not at all uncommon for me to end up with, you know, even like 150 or 200 different versions of the same file, especially if it's a large project that's taking me a long time. I can go into the hundreds easily, and I don't regret it. Um, at the end of the day, using up that extra disk, disk space is much more valuable to me than, uh, you know, <coughs> potentially making a mistake and losing hours of my work. So. But again, I usually save uh, my binary format because it's much faster and it takes up less disk space, which is kind of nice.